Hello. I've brought it to 314 Reactor here, and today we're looking finally at Portal RTX, which feels like it's taken about 10 years to finally come out. Running this with a 4090 and a Ryzen 7700X, and I've maxed out as many settings as I can. Let's have a look at the settings menu here. So you have to press Alt X to bring up the RTX Remix settings menu. As you can see, we've got about 50% of the VRAM being used, which means the game is probably taking about 11, 12 gigabytes of VRAM. We've got DLSS 3 on, quality with frame generation. All the graphics are as high as they can possibly go. I've also changed a few things in the developer setting menu, but I tend to avoid this because it can blow things up if you click the wrong thing, I've found. And this game can crash quite a bit if you get some things wrong. So we can switch off denoising here so we can look at that. And you can also spawn custom cubes here, type in a whole bunch of code words. The only one I'm really interested in is the lens cube, so we will get that activated later. But for the most part, what we really need to know is these settings here and they're all maxed out. The other thing to note is, is the frame rate counters in the top right in a tiny little number that you probably can't even see. There's the source in-game frame rate counter, which is reading about 40 FPS. And then there's the Steam in-game FPS counter, which is reading about 80 FPS. So I think the top right one, which is the source one is reading the internal frame counter and then the one on the left is reading the external frame counter once DLSS 3 has run and generated an extra frame. Even more interestingly if you go into the options here because of the way this is done it's I think it's DirectX 9 the original portal but there's the RTX remix running with it almost magical technology because all these settings here you can't really change in fact if you do try and change them most likely crash the game it's really interesting I'm gonna really need to look into how RTX remix works because even the EXE says it's DirectX 9 but there is another EXE in the background called RTX remix bridge so that must be seemingly running in DirectX 9 and it thinks my hardware DirectX level is DirectX 7 which is quite funny already just on this scene we can see here the shadowing is perfect the reflections are accurate. There's just a kind of bit of blurring and the occasional bit of lag with the rays. Other than that, it looks pretty phenomenal. Uh, of course, there's the character's own shadow there being shown from the energy ball there. Again, incredibly accurate shadow. Really, really cool. So even with the SS3, it's still pretty heavy on the RTX 4090. I imagine that's to do with how RTX Remix works. There must be a lot of overhead on that. So you can see there's some ghosting there, some blurring. That's just something we see with all current gen RTX games. Momentum. So here we go, there's a nice sample of reflection up there. That reflection in the metal up there. But it does take a while to update. So you move, and then the reflection updates, and it kind of blurs. So I think that's just an optimization, a limitation of ray tracing as it stands currently. But it still looks pretty amazing. Yeah, I wonder why initially they wouldn't put it on Half-Life 2 first. Seems like a much better game to put ray tracing on because of the huge amount of extra detail that's in that game, the different times of day, stuff like that, and the different environments you're in. Whereas Portal is fairly similar in its environments, but now given the, the performance impact, I can kind of see why. But then I've seen YouTube channels where they've actually managed to load up some Half-Life 2 map. So there's another example of some really nice reflections. So again, it's it's it looks really good, and there's some points where some things start to look photo real because of the just sheer amount of accurate lighting and shadowing and reflections. Skip ahead and try and find a better looking level to analyze. See, areas like this are fantastic for showing off what ray tracing can do. How dynamic that shadow is, how like diffuse the shadow gets as it hits that far wall. It's just so ac it really does start to trick your brain into thinking, is this photo real? Just for a second. It's spooky. There's always something odd about shadowing and lighting with rasterization. They just sort of subconsciously note and go, oh, that's not quite right. But ray tracing goes beyond that uncanny valley. That's crazy. 
So in this area we've got 68 FPS, 70 FPS, and that's with the frame generation. And we've got uh, jumping around between 39 to 45 FPS it looks like. So if we go here and we turn the frame generation off, we are now down to 43 FPS. Which does actually match what the internal frame counter says. Well, that's, that seems to be switched between 46 and 47. So the internal frame rate, the source internal frame rate is correct on the right there. And then the actual frame rate we're getting out at the end is on the left at the top there. Unfortunately, NVIDIA Share and Microsoft's Game Bar don't work with RTX Remix yet, which means we aren't able to view the FPS with a nice big font. Instead, it's just tiny little numbers that you can probably barely see on the YouTube channel. Crank up the resolution, max out the screen so you can see the, see the FPS counter as much as possible. So we've got about 45 FPS here on both counters. So here's the interesting bit. We turn on frame generation, DLSS 3. And now the internal frame rate has gone down 8 FPS to 37 FPS, but the external resolution has gone up to 73 FPS. I wonder if that happens to every game, where the internal frame rate prior to gone down, the actual frame rate at the end of it after that frame generation has gone up, right? I don't know. It's interesting, and it'd be really interesting for someone like Linus Tech Tips or Digital Foundry to do a deep dive into the disconnect between the input, the internal processing that needs to happen that causes any sort of extra processing time for the frame generation, combined with the actual feeling of the output. Because this feels pretty smooth to me. I mean, it feels slightly off in a way, because obviously the internal response time is still tied to that actual real frame rate prior to frame generation. It'd be interesting to see where that technology goes in the future. Here we go, another cool area where we've got some nice shadowing and lighting going on. So another thing we can do is, if we go into the developer settings menu, we can switch off denoise. So now we're just getting purely all the rays and only the rays with nothing to clean up the noise in between them. And this is one of those things where again in future there will just be so many rays you won't need a denoiser. Fascinating to see and it gives a bit of an insight as to why some of the shadows take a while to update as well because you can see the rays contacting that surface and then hitting the light source that they originate from. And you can tell there's definitely a delay in how those rays get processed. That's why you get streaking and ghosting and stuff like that. Although I did see an anti-ghosting setting here. So let's uh, turn that off. Although that's part of DLSS, I think. Again, I mean, you've got the ray tracing, but you've also got DLSS and you can get some ghosting with that. So that could also be a part of it. But it gives it a really unique look without the denoising. Feels a little bit like 16-bit, sort of. Let's see how expensive the denoiser is as well. So we're at 99 FPS here. Let's turn frame generation off so we can get a true sense of the frame rate. So we're at 66 FPS here, 62 FPS. Denoising. Whoa, okay. Yeah, so denoising takes about, oh god, about 17 FPS off there. Wow, okay, so denoising is expensive which means it must be really expensive to pump out so many rays that you don't need a denoiser. Anti-ghost has minimal impact on the frame rate. Like I said, there are other settings in here as well. I did mess about these earlier, but it completely crashed the game out. And it crashed the game to the point where I had to actually verify the game files and it found a corrupted file that I had to re-download because otherwise it wouldn't boot anymore. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Let's try the denoiser with DSS frame generation on. So 80 frames, turn off the denoiser, 100 frames. So, we are running in DLSS quality mode, which means internally it should be what? Quad HD, I think? And then being machine learning upscaled to 4K. Which means, unless RTX Remix does something different, all these rays should be a, the quad HD number of rays. Because of the, that's the internal resolution before DLSS does its upscaling magic. So if we were to just turn DLSS off and just do raw 4K, turn on the denoising again. Look how, oh, look how much quickly the denoiser fills in the detail as well. So I think what's happening there is there's so many rays being fired out, so many more rays being fired out, that it's there's like sub-pixel noise causing lots of flashing. So even just cranking up the rays could introduce its own problem. I'm guessing? Yeah, what's going on there? What is going on there? So the noise, noise is where there's not enough rays to resolve the image. So you get blank spots in between, which causes that noise. But when you crank up the amount of rays and actually seem to get a lot more noise flashing, 
like well, like this flickering sort of effect. What is that? And it looks like there's a lot less streaking. Yeah, way less streaking. And yeah, w way less streaking. The rays are up, like the reflections are updating it immediately. So I think the Lego game that had ray tracing in it, Builder's Journey, that didn't have a denoiser. So they must have found a way to get around this. But if you look here, we're now no longer seeing that ghosting. But as soon as you turn on the as soon as you turn on the denoiser, then that ghosting appears. So I'm wondering if a lot of that ghosting and streaking isn't also being caused by the denoiser catching up on the ray data. And here we go. So here's pure 4K with no DLSS and no frame generation and it's 25 FPS. Wow. There's so many different options here. Full resolution. Ooh, there we go. So I think what we've got here is you set super resolution to DLSS and then you put the DLSS mode to full resolution. I think essentially what you're getting is DLAA. So now we should be able to see. Ooh, what's going on there? Still a bit of streaking. So it says it's full resolution, but it doesn't look like it's firing out as many rays as it was with just switching DLSS off at 4K, because you're still getting a lot of that streaking. So I think that would be the solution, yeah, DLAA and just allowing the full 4K amount of rays to go out, and then just applying the anti-aliasing on top. Yeah, still got that streaking, 32 FPS. Let's put it to ultra performance as well. Oh yeah, oof. Yeah, you can really see uh, the internal resolution takes a major hit, but also the ray count seems to have also taken a massive hit. I'm just going through the settings here. Quality to ultra performance. Yeah, look at that. Far less rays coming out. Far more rays coming out by the looks of it. Let's go from full resolution to quality with the denoiser on. Back. There's just so many, so many cogs in this rendering pipeline now. Let's see if we can move to a new area. Also, we can see free video memory, 15% free, full resolution. Then we go down to quality DLSS, jumps up to 39% free. And ultra performance, 44% free. So it definitely is rendering a hell of a lot more. Um, and then we appear to have broken the game completely. So it's 15% free VRAM. DLSS full resolution, which should essentially just be DLAA. If we go to none, raw 4K, still 15%. So the only question here is why does DLSS full resolution not look a lot more similar to 4K native? Because DLSS full resolution should be 4K native, just with DLAA applied. Get that denoiser back on. There's still a bit of a delay in the reflections updating, as you can see there, with that blue portal being reflected at the top. Still a bit of fade in, fade out. Something that would need a real, real deep dive and hours of testing to figure out that stuff. Let's uh, put it on quality for now. Alrighty, so after an extreme amount of over analysis there, let's have a look at some of the cool cubes that you can do. So you go to Alt X, then you go to the developer settings, you go to about, and then you go to the secret section here and you can enter in code words, which can spawn special cubes for you. So if you type in physically, Based, spawn an ice cube, fully path traced, spawn a lens, direct illumination. So not all of these are super interesting. The main ones we want to focus on are ice lens, digital skull, and RTX. So let's go with the ice cube first. So this gives a really good example of the refraction which is really nice and of course, physically correct. Now you can get obviously refraction with rasterization, but not to this level. There's just a lot of detail there and a lot of the world being refracted on many levels because of course there's a gap in between and there's a hole through it there, that cylindrical hole, which is causing a refraction through the back, through that cylindrical path in the middle there. It's really complex, and I don't think you'd be able to do that without 
stepping rays through it and calculating the path of light, as well as a reflection on top. So let's fire up a lens. So here you can see Shell's reflection there. You can see... I think there's even a... Yep, a sort of reflected and inverted view of what's beyond the lens, as well as being what's reflected behind the lens. So you're getting that kind of, uh, I think, convex effect there, where the image is turned upside down. And again, that is where it would probably take so much hacking with a rasterizer that it just wouldn't be performant enough and it would be a bit of a nightmare. And there you go, you've got the more zoomed out sort of view looking through the other side of the lens. It's the, it's the physical accuracy of all the lighting and reflections that's just makes this so impressive. You can even see there's multiple lenses in there as well. And the lenses are going through each other, so you've got that sort of level of zoom and curvature there, going through that, going through that. So it's really physically accurate. Digital skull, which provides a nice bit of lighting. Again. Nice and physically accurate lighting, soft shadows. You've got the shadow mixed with the lighting beneath it there, as you've got the shadow. You can even see half the shadow of the cube kind of missing there from the main light source. And then the other half of the shadow mixed in with the light being emitted from the bottom there. Just makes things so much easier for artists and developers of games. Because they can just drop these things in the world, give them the physical properties and then just hit play basically and let the ray tracer handle it. It's really, really nice. NVIDIA can't help but advertise themselves a bit more here. There also looks like some volumetric lighting coming through here. I think Bloomy Effect, which I think hopefully has been done by the ray tracing. It does look pretty nice. Again, it just has a bit of thickness to the atmosphere, similar to the ray tracing quake. See my ray tracing quake video. I think the way RTX works is that it runs in the background and works alongside the game engine to put calls into Vulkan RT, I believe, inject ray tracing into the game engine uh, somehow. So some of this may be still rasterization and some of it may not be, or the whole thing may be ray traced. I think the whole thing is ray traced, judging by how good the lighting looks everywhere. So it's very clever how that back end works. Interesting. So yeah, I imagine this bloom is a ray trace effect. So I think that concludes this over analysis for now. It wasn't as exciting as the last video, but it's good just to look into these things and what effects turning certain things on and off does, especially with DLSS, internal resolution, things like that. It is fascinating to see. I do, I do wonder how much overhead there is with RTX Remix than just putting RTX natively into a game. I did also try and get this working with Black Mesa, but it doesn't appear to want to work. It's the same method of just dragging the folder over and it just crashes on boot. Still need to tweak it a bit more, but I haven't seen anyone else have any success with it. I think it could be because the Black Mesa build is built on a much newer version of the Source engine that probably isn't compatible with RTX Remix yet. But hopefully in time, we will be able to see Black Mesa RTX. Thanks for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment to let me know what you think and if there's any other settings I can try. Stick around for more tech project videos and gaming videos, especially related to ray tracing. Hope everyone's staying safe. Hope everyone's having a good holidays and I will see you in the next video.